Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey y'all, how are you doing today? Uh, just wanted to let you know that we put some nematodes out in our garden and in Colt's pen. Um, it was a lot longer process than I was expecting it to be, but <laughs> but it uh, it got done yesterday. Well, last night specifically. Um, I got all of the garden and the patch area um, laid out with nematodes. I, as I mentioned, Colt's pin in and around the edge of his on the around the edge on the outside of his pin, and also over by our where we planted tomatoes and onions and our leeks and um, bunching onions. bunching yes bunching onions. So. So, so I'll let Simber mention what's the benefit of them. <laughs> so you've probably heard of nematodes before and sorry, Mr. Sir has been sick this weekend and he's still feeling icky. icky. Yeah, he icky. just took some medicine to see if that helps. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry, he's wounding the camera. <laughs> You've probably heard of nematodes before, and you haven't heard of them in a positive light. But that's because there are beneficial nematodes and nematodes that are parasites. We're talking about beneficial nematodes. Yeah, beneficial nematodes. So, so, Yeah. And like Mr. Sir Malachi is saying, <laughs> he's taking over. He's taking over. So, so, um, 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 okay, Mr. Let's go ahead and finish the rest of the story. You want to hold this for me? So the ones we got are have three different varieties, and not. I didn't even know there were that many different types of beneficial nematodes. But we got SC, SF, and HB. And the reason we decided to go for all three is because our original plan was to just have them to control the grubs in our garden area. But by having these three different strains or three different varieties of nematodes... They also will control uh, um, or help to control our flea problem and tick problem as well as the grubs. And I think also ants. Yes, and ants. And with the back to Eden garden method, ants are a problem in our garden because they stay under the cardboard and under the wood chips and then come up whenever they want to... Uh, get food or whenever they're disturbed and since you can't see them because they're underneath the material It makes it a little more difficult to kind of sidestep them So we will put a link in the description below for the Amazon site Amazon link that we purchased these uh, under and we um, We may end up having to do another application as Justin said, he was able to get all the areas that we were really wanting to concentrate on. But um, they do say for heavy infestations, it's best to do multiple applications. Now, whether or not we do the second application this year, I don't know. We might do one in the fall just to catch another stage of the grub life cycle. And also the fleas and ticks and ants. And those aren't all the, the pests that these beneficial nematodes help. Uh, help control but um, if we don't do it in the fall then we'll definitely do another application next year and for what insects these nematodes these beneficial nematodes help control in our opinion it was worth the cost yes. now it's not prime it's not Amazon Prime so you do have to pay for shipping but this particular link that we have and what and what we could determine was the best bang for your buck because it has the broadest square footage that it um, covers in addition to having the three strains instead of just two or one. 
and I used a just a normal little one gallon pressure sprayer that you can buy for five dollars at Walmart that I put the water in and then I put the, the nematodes in it um, I actually did it half in I are you did, trying to get sympathy sir <laughs> I did half of them in one in one at one time and then finished getting it all sprayed out in the garden and then I had to come out come in and get the other half to finish the garden and then do Colts pen so um, so really for the amount that we got it would have been best in a two gallon sprayer but doing it the way I did it I think works pretty well um, and so I watered down the area before I, I watered down the area before I sprayed it and then um, applied it and then put water um, over it again so that um, when when you apply it you want it on a wetter on a wetter surface so that it helps to soak in and then you put the water on again to kind of reinforce that and help them to get into the ground because they are ground dwelling uh, critters <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's interesting because some of the strains are sedentary where they just stay in one spot and they wait for their prey to come along and then they grab them to eat them as the prey passes by whereas others are foragers and they move through the soil to find their food that they're going to eat so i thought that was kind of an interesting tidbit something i didn't know um, prior to going on amazon and searching for these because I actually found out about beneficial nematodes whenever I worked for Wichita Valley Nursery, a native uh, native plant and organic nursery that's in Wichita Falls. And um, at that point, I was told that, you know, you can apply them in the spring to control the growths. Now, one of the local organic gardening nurseries told me that, that in their opinion, applying the beneficial nematodes in the spring isn't very effective if you're wanting to control grubs because the grub life cycle uh, is more conducive to having grubs at the right surface level of the ground in the fall. But that wasn't consistent with what we were seeing in our garden because he was saying they should be like five or six inches down below the surface and we were finding them at two and three inches below. So that's why, b between that and the fact that my parents had a lot of success with fewer grubs after a spring application of beneficial nematodes, we felt that now was just as good of a time as any. And plus, since we were also wanting to control the fleas, the ticks, and the ants, spring would be a good time for that as well. Instead of going through the summer dealing with the heavy infestations of those insects and that are or arachnids in the case of the <laughs> ticks um and then you know then trying to control them in the fall so anyway um i don't know that we will really have a quantitative analysis to show you that I don't know okay if there's a way to do that. i mean i guess if we really wanted to get scientific about it we could have done like a one meter by six inch Space and counted how many grubs were in it in the garden and then next year count it again and see if it's any less of a load but you know there's going to be other environmental factors that could play a part in that like how many um, June bugs come in our area etc all we're really wanting is for the situation to be better so if it's better then we call it a success and worth every penny for the nematodes yep. Especially if it's a way for us to help control uh, these problematic pests without having to apply synthetic chemicals and pesticides. Mm. Because we don't want pesticides around you. Say yeah. yeah. Tell them. Tell them. Say yeah. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anything else? No, I can't think of anything. All so. right. We probably ought to get Mr. to bed. Yes. So, you guys have a blessed day, and we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Bye, y'all. Bye.
Cloud Hoppers, thanks for watching the video. Push the thumbs up to like the video. Also, hit that subscribe button, also the bell, so that you can get notifications when our videos come out. Check us out on our social media pages, too. We have Facebook and Pinterest, and soon we'll have Instagram. The links are below. Bye, y'all! Bye! Good job.